Hi everyone. Welcome. So today is day three of Kwanzaa and today's principle is Ujima, which is collective work and responsibility. So here we have the day three prompts. The spread is like a one, two, three, four on one side, five, six, seven on the other. So each day always has seven cards um, to represent the seven days of Kwanzaa. Um, so yeah, we're going to look today at, at collective work and responsibility. So how I help to build my community, how I contribute to the collective effort, how I help others with problem solving, how I nurture and teach younger people, how others perceive my community efforts, how others perceive my level of responsibility, and finally on seven, an area of personal growth in my community efforts. So um, <clears throat> I also wanted to just offer a really quick shout out to um, Candy Soul and Soil, whose uh, who's videos on Kwanzaa, if you haven't watched them, at least watch day one, the level of um, heart and enthusiasm and just beauty that she throws into um, that first video actually moved me to tears. Um, had I realized what I was about to watch, um, I would have made sure that I, I had the space and time at that exact moment to to comment and, and say something and I would have just stopped where I, I was walking the dog. Um, I would have stopped and just, um, you know, sat, sat with her. It was, it was really beautiful. So, um, I just wanted to thank her for that. It really made my day. Um, so yeah. And, uh, you know, as always a, a giant thank you and, and shout out to, to, um, Queen Osset and Veronica Rose for their work on creating this. Today, I'm going to be working with The Hoodoo Tarot by Tiana Lee McQuiller um, with the artwork by Caitlin V. Foise. This is a wonderful deck. Um, I think it sold out at a certain point. I was fortunate enough to get a copy of it before that happened. Um, and it's a deck that I worked with a lot through June, I think. Um, May, June, maybe just June and June, July. But I'd gotten it before that because I saw a walkthrough from Queen Osset that really um, moved me rather deeply. And uh, I wanted to learn as much as I could. I, I really, I just didn't know anything, I realized at that time, about um, the differences in various different um, African traditional religions. And this deck has been a real education. I've, I've loved working with it. It's just amazing to have and to work with. Um, yeah, it's stunning. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle and deal out my cards, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've had a chance to draw all the cards and um, consult the guidebook because, again, with anytime I'm reading for myself, guidebooks I find really helpful in terms of really getting the juice behind, um, behind the interpretation. Um, another reason I really, with this particular deck, I tend to really want the guidebook because uh, Tiana Lee McQuiller offers so many specific details in her descriptions that really help interpret the cards um, and give you the full depth that's available within them uh, and within her interp interpretation of them. Um, something I noticed too that I really just wanted to throw out there, I'm curious if anybody else has had this experience with this particular deck. When I read with it, I have a sense that I've got multiple um, presences in the room looking over my shoulders and influencing the reading. <laughs> I sometimes have that with decks. Um, I've had that with a few different decks. This is definitely one of them. Um, I don't have that with every deck. Honestly, there's some decks that seem to come through with their own messages and their own interpretations, but this one in particular really feels like um, 
when you pick it up, it comes loaded with, with, um, energies and, and, um, spirits that are ready to read with you. And they will sometimes, I feel I've, I've also had an experience too, where this deck, um, really called to me while I was working with a client and, um, asked to be used. So, and, and came through with an incredibly strong reading and I really wasn't even that familiar with the deck. And I told the client, like, this is not a deck I've worked with enough to feel very confident using it with a client. So I will refer to the guidebook because it has its own, you know, messages and flavor. And every time I read with it, there is a, it, the depth and the clarity is um, astounding. So I just thought I would throw that out there. It's a very special deck. Um and as I'm not a, a hoodoo practitioner, and I'm really very ignorant of, of that particular practice um, and of root work, I'm, I'm really just learning about it. Um, I find it remarkable that, that it would still come through so strongly for me anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, that just to say, so <laughs> as we start this one, um, so again, we're talking about collective work and responsibility, Ujima. So the first one asks how I help to build my community. And in this case, it's the mother of sticks, which we would know as the queen of wands. And a kite, which is a raptor, is lighting her cigarette. What um, McQuiller says about this particular card, she says that the mother of sticks is one of the most uplifting cards in the deck. On the positive side, she's optimistic, fiery, confident, courageous, focused, and powerful. Um, but on the negative side, she's malicious, overbearing, arrogant, two-faced, a workaholic, or major drama queen. I feel like the interpretation coming through was uh, is about leadership. You know, it's is about um, helping the community through leadership, and really, in many ways, by by being a positive and uplifting presence for for the community. It's also good to be told, you know, what the negative possibilities are here in order to be aware of them. So, you know, obviously those would not be helpful characteristics. So they would be ones to be um, aware of, you know, of, of not creating drama or being malicious, overbearing, two-faced, workaholic, or, you know, any of the other, other aspects here. And as I'm a, uh, I'm a Sagittarius in Western astrology, I'm, I'm a lot of fire in Western astrology. So I tend to be represented by... Um, by the Queen of Wands as well so as a significator. So question two or prompt two is how I contribute to the collective effort. Um, and that one came out very interestingly. Um, the first card I drew is the Seven of Knives. And that was really disturbing. <laughs> I just thought, wow, really? I, I wasn't aware of doing that. Um, you know, to me that, that seven of knives that, you know, the smile is there, but she is, she's waiting to get you, you know, is what I see there. So of course, you know, go to the book. The image is a housewife cooking a meal for her husband, but before she serves it, she must remove all of the black cock feathers she placed in the soup to keep him faithful. It's a common practice for women to use menstrual blood and for men to use semen for the same purpose. And then the meaning of the card positively is strategic planning, a sincere apology, constructive criticism, reparations, confessions, lone wolves, and turning over a new leaf. And of course, we know what the negative is of, of the seven of knives or seven of swords, right? We get cheaters, thieves, spies, saboteurs, victimization, hidden agendas, conspiracies, betrayal, deception, con artists, liars, imposters, etc. Um, and people who pretend to be your friend, unethical behavior and people who pretend to be your friend. Um, you know, that happens in communities all the time. Um, certainly I've been in a part of Buddhist communities where that was, you know, inherently somehow part of that dynamic. And part of the practice is that you continue to come back and you continue to um, strengthen your own resolve you um, you know what the risks are involved in dealing with that particular sangha or that particular sangha member, um, et cetera, and you, you know, or the dynamic inherent within it, and you continue to practice and come back. It's only when you recognize there is no ability to carry forward here that you throw in the towel, right? Um, and it has been a lesson in tenacity to, to do that. 
So I feel like what, you know, the prompt here, like how I contribute to the collective effort, um, that was a hard one to answer. I couldn't quite get where it was coming from. So I asked for a clarification, you know, like, can you please help me understand this one a little bit better? And interestingly, the card that came up um, is the free man. Some things that stood out, you know, the free man doesn't count in situations that demand subservience to conventional wisdom or the status quo. He doesn't think he's better than anyone. He has just accepted that new grass doesn't grow lusciously on a beaten path. Uh, the free man doesn't exist in the space where those thoughts flourish. He's more interested in the attainment of wisdom by following his passions and what he knows to be true, wherever that may ultimately lead. So after really um, spending some time with this uh, and reading, you know, obviously the, the meaning in the book is incredibly rich and layered, but it's actually pretty obvious. I think it's simply that I don't participate in this dynamic. Um, that, you know, being represented by, by the Fool card here, I'm sort of off doing my own thing anyway, um, pursuing my own path, and that in some respects it maybe makes me a little bit Im more impartial, um, or at least means that by not contributing to that dynamic, I have something, something else to offer. So that's uh, position number two. So three, how I help others with problem solving. Um, so the, the card that came up for that one was the six of coins. The images of a woman with an itchy left palm who holds a $2 bill. It's believed that an itchy palm is a predictor of financial gain or loss. So the way, you know, the meaning here, you know, we're looking at charitable giving, generosity, debt repayment, loans, grants, scholarships, philanthropy, financial aid, fairness, equality, mentoring, helping others you know, and those who care about the community. So how I help others with problem solving, I think is just through fairness, generosity, you know, and, and through, you know, hoping for equality, do mentoring where it's possible. Not that I always have anything to offer, but sometimes holding space can be, can be impactful. And then, you know, generally just caring about the community. And then we get to number uh, four, how I nurture and teach younger people. This was a neat one. So we have the three of coins. The meaning behind this card is beautiful. Internships, high standards, appreciation for a job well done, beneficial use of talents, exceeding expectations, being validated by others, degrees or certifications, collaborations, and goal orientation. So you know, how I nurture and teach younger people, it seems, is it has it always has always been, you know, as as an actual teacher, as a collaborative teacher. So when I collaborate with students, you know, I'm I really collaborate to hold space with them, you know, to work with them in their growth, uh, to find ways of helping them find internships, appreciating holding high standards and appreciating them deeply when they when they measure up to them. Um, pointing out what they do well, putting everything I have into that relationship in order that they can grow, and really finding the way to continue to do it to do that, because it is so much a part of my path, is something that I really feel drawn to do in 2021. So we'll see how that works, because I don't know how that's going to take shape yet. I'm I'm looking at it, but being a teacher, it's just part of who I am. I can't not be a teacher. Even when I'm just trying to hang out, sometimes I end up stepping up and teaching, uh, which is not always the best thing, but um, when there's an appropriate outlet, that doesn't happen as much. <laughs> okay, so um, number five is how others perceive my community efforts. So the Ace of Baskets um, means, you know, it's a positive, compassionate, emotional renewal, having a sense of peace. Um, happiness, messages in water, abundance, intuition, you know, healing old wounds, etc. So how others perceive my community efforts would seem to be positive. That was that was a refreshing message to receive. And again, you know, with this deck, it's like, good, move on. <laughs> you know, there's 
like no, there's no sentimentality to it. It's like, okay, you're doing well. You know, people are receiving what you're putting out. It's good. Move on. Um, so there we are. And then we move on to uh, number six, how others perceive my level of responsibility again. And I ended up with the two of knives. So once again, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Because I've had the two of knives in another, uh, in another spread. It was in yesterday's. So again, you know, going to the book. Is, well, let's talk about the, what we're looking at here first, because I feel like that's important. So the image is, you know, root workers referred to some people as being four-eyed, which was a reference to the ability to perceive both physical and spiritual realms. Um, so here, a four-eyed woman nervously bites her lips because her spiritual eyes have been gouged out. Right? So we're getting both the positive and negative meaning um, in the visual of this card. So the positive um, meaning here, you know, is a truce, making a firm decision, renewed action, lies being exposed, saying what you mean and meaning what you say, being in touch with how you really feel, facing the consequences of past choices, patiently waiting to see if things work out. That's positive, you know, that there there is going to be, I think, some perception that that has been the way that others have, have perceived my level of responsibility. On the negative side, you know, the, there, there's a lot here, obviously, avoiding real the real issues, unequal partnerships, suppressed emotions, failure to see things as they really are, um, failure to communicate effectively, and fence riders. You know, I, I always run the risk uh, of being someone that's perceived that way in terms of responsibility. And it's, it's something I've dealt with my whole life. And... Um, you know, it's really because I, I have difficulty taking sides. I see, I tend to see all, all sides to a situation. It's really when things are very clearly not right in terms of, you know, just overall integrity. That's when I tend to, to really get off of that, that middle space. And that's where you'll start to see um, more of that, that fierceness uh, come out. You know, the, the peaceful, gentle space uh, erodes and something else is, is present. The, the wrathful aspects of, of what I'm capable of start to, to come up. So I guess it, it, you know, the people feel that I've taken responsibility, that I'm will, someone who's willing to uh, make firm decisions, speak clearly and, and straightforwardly about what I, what I mean that I'm in touch with how I feel and that I'm willing to face the consequences of, of past decisions, which I am, you know, that's, that's definitely a big part of, of what I am and, and who I am. Okay. Pos final position. Position seven is an area of personal growth in my community efforts. Now this one was interesting because two cards spat out of the deck and you'll see why in a minute. And again, this comes back to the whole idea that I feel like there's people with me here when I'm reading with this deck, they're gone now because I've already done the reading um, but I wouldn't be surprised if I had a sense of someone coming up and saying, uh, 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 that is not how we interpreted that earlier. And you know it, you know, if I, if I really didn't get it. So we have the five of knives, which is of course is going to hold everything we know about the five of knives. Let's talk about the image for just a second. So the image is though a woman showing off a silver coin hidden beneath her tongue. This is called putting a hit, putting a bit in your mouth. It was believed by some root workers that if you had no choice but to lie in court, you would be freed of responsibility for lying after swearing on the Bible. So the meaning of this card in the positive, uh, making amends, conflict resolved, vindication, overcoming challenges, vengeance, um, righteous fury, treachery exposed, being prepared for battle, the end of attacks, um, confronting evil and compromise. I think all of the negative aspects of the five of, of swords or five of knives are, are pretty clear, right? Yeah, most of us are, are pretty aware of those. So knowing that that's the case, right? So an area of personal growth, I, I was kind of scratching my head for a second, but or I would have been, except for the fact that what came with it was the three of baskets, right? An area of personal growth in my community effort, you know, when I add three of baskets, you know, which is uh, parties, reunion, good fortune, hobbies, plenty, renewed health, collaboration, spending time with friends, team players, etc. You know, where maybe where I could help, 
you know, I could help grow, um, or grow my efforts would be in terms of, um, conflict resolution on some level or turning con help turning conflict into understanding, take things that are difficult, that, that are challenging to be with, that raise people's suspicions and finding ways to bring a sense of, of um, peace and camaraderie and resolution to it. Yeah. And I feel like a very accurate, you know, pretty straightforward representation of things. Again, this is a deck that always ju is just very straightforward, straight to the point. There's nothing really hidden. If you know what it is you're looking at, the, you know, the answers are very immediate and very obvious. So... There we go. Thank you again, um, as always, to Veronica Rose and especially to Queen Osset uh, for this, you know, this beautiful practice that, that we've been invited to join, join in and be a part of. And um, I will see everyone again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.